York City is the greatest city in the world and also home to some of the greatest restaurants in the world. Now, you've probably seen my next guest, Dave Ruggiero, before on the show. He's come up to Carmine's table. Well, today we thought we'd bring you down to New York City to his new restaurant, which I think is one of the greatest new restaurants in New York City. It's Rouge here on the corner of 62nd and Lexington Avenue. And David is the man behind the stoves. This is his restaurant, where well, you'll find him most of the time. So let's go in, check out his restaurant, his food, and say hi to Dave. Come on inside. Now this is Rouge, and this is chef owner Dave Ruggiero. Hello, Dave. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. I saw you standing outside. I was waiting for you to come in. What were you? Uh, you know, we were waiting for the crew to set up. I'm a diner coming in to say hello. Huh? But you have to answer one question before we talk about anything else. Only one? One question oh, first. Why Rouge? You know what? All joking aside, I had a lot of French restaurants with crazy names and stuff right. like that. First of all, no one could say it. No one could spell it. Name some of them. Le Chantilly, right. stuff like that. Which looks like Le Chantilly. Yeah. Right. No okay. one can say it. Rouge, it's easy, it's sexy, it's right. red, it's color. You know, it's, it's what I like to do. And red is carried throughout the restaurant, like the wall here behind yeah. us. Tell me about this, because this is kind of unique. Well, you see what this is? This is a historic townhouse. This was an old Texan uh, men's club in the 1800s. Really? Yeah. In fact, under the kitchen, there's, a, there's the old swimming pool from the Texas men's club. Inside the building, they had a, a swimming under pool. Under the kitchen. So it doesn't get hot back there, then you're okay. Well, if it does, we can take a little swim. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we did? We took this whole historic townhouse, and what I didn't want to do was make this old feeling. And it would be very easy because of the trappings of the building. So what I did was we tried to take elements, the French elements, like if you look at this wallpaper we did, and we tried to take these, these, fleur, these are like a play on a fleur de lis, like a classic right. fleur de lis. But we didn't want to make it flat. So these, in Vermont, the guy who did this for me is up in Vermont. He had a toy factory that just went out of business. So that's what So it these was. are little toy wheels. And then we got this is from a sewing factory, the spindles off Very the sewing. Cool. So we did that just to kind of bring three dimension to the wallpaper. Then you go upstairs in the main room. Right. And the chandeliers are going to get a reaction from people. Either they're going to love it or they're going to hate it. They're a play on a classic chandelier, but by no sense are they classic at all. And then we said when we did it, what are we going to put on the wall? If you put paintings, it already becomes dated. Right. So what we did was we found redheads. You know, ordinary looking people. Not ugly. Well, well maybe well, a few of them a little broke. <laughs> I don't want to say it. But what we did was they're redheads. We shot them digitally. We, we made it black and white. Right. And then we digitized the, uh, the hair and we put it back to red. So when you people sit there and the first thing they said is, why is this moron put the picture of this person on the thing? And then they look and they go, oh, yeah, the hair oh, is yeah, red. Yeah, red hair. Red. And you're talking about the French influence, because now tell me about the menu. Well, the menu is, I call it cosmopolitan. It's French roots. But what I do is I take influence, you know, New York. Anywhere you walk around New York, you find some kind of cultural influence. Right. Asian, Italian, you know, everything. So I take little cultural influences, and I let them f sneak their way in, into, the, into the menu. Like, you know, like the codfish, I do with miso, uh, the short ribs, which I want you to taste later. Oh, that sounds good to me. Yeah, that's with all kinds of spices, and I even serve it with a little pickled papaya. Well, I tell you what, let's stop talking about it. Would you take me in the kitchen? Why not? All right, let's go in the kitchen. We're going to take a short break. We come back. I'm with the chef in the kitchen here at Rouge in New York City, and we're going to see what this guy's got on the menu. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Now we're in the kitchen, and it looks a little funny the way we're kind of working here, but this, I'm amazed, first of all, the size. It looks funny the way we're working. It looks funny how close you <laughs> are to this me. This is normal. Be careful. All right, all right. Now, Chef, you're going to make two dishes for us today, but one sauce to complement both. We're going to consolidate to one sauce. Okay? And what's the sauce you're making? Well, I'm going to make, in French, we call beurre blanc. Everything sounds better in French. You think? If I want to go to the bathroom, I say it in French sounds better. How do you say it in French? I don't know. Let's do this. <laughs> Beurre blanc, butter sauce. Well, we start with a little bit of butter, right? right? And here we got a little bit of shallots, OK? Minced fine, I mean. Yeah, look at that, a little bit of chopped shallots. Right. All right, let the camera get in there close, see that? Oh, isn't that nice? Well, look tell me about it. This is real cooking. This isn't stunt cooking, right? What do you think, this is fake? Forget about it. Now, look, a little bit of wine, OK? Any kind of white wine? The kind of wine you would drink. Perfect if you don't want to drink it, then don't, don't use it. I agree with that. So we put a little bit of wine in there. And this is like a great, versatile little sauce, OK? 
You know you're what? gonna use it on what today? What's what's the two dishes you're gonna make? We're gonna do a little scallop dish, right. okay? And then we're gonna do a a, 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 a an oyster dish. This oyster is a little French, a little Italian. It's completely confused. Doesn't know what the hell it's now, doing. Now talk about that for a second, because you're known. Your cookbooks are Italian. Yeah. You have a little bit, a slight accent, like you might have a little Italian background. Italian you got family. the accent. I don't have an accent. <laughs> So where's the French coming out? Because I don't think most people understand where your French training comes in. Well, you know, all joking aside, when I started to cook, many, about 50, 60 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> there were no really good Italian restaurants. If you really wanted to be the best at what you did, right. where were you going to go? French there kitchens. There was mom and pop Italian restaurants, which are okay. I went to the French kitchen, and I disappointed the living hell out of my father. <laughs> <laughs> little vinegar, little white wine vinegar right there. Okay. Look at that. Okay, while we're gabbing here. All right, we're going to let that uh, reduce for 10 seconds, okay? But you know what? French cooking isn't what people perceive as it being years ago with the, the salt, you know, the butter and the... Well, wait, what am I saying butter? Let's go back to the recipe. <laughs> well, yeah, but now, see, that's a good point. I think everything is moderation. So now, this is one of those classics that you probably learned all those years ago in a French kitchen. You're bringing back some of the classics. It's, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. It's really good. This sauce is very good. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to put a touch of cream, okay? okay. Just a little bit, okay? <laughs> And let's, let's let that reduce for just about a minute, okay? All right. So here, after a minute, we shut the gas off. Okay. Look, we're gonna bring this over here off the fire, okay? And now we're gonna find out why they call it a beurre blanc, a butter sauce. So we're gonna whip in, oh, just a little bit of butter. Just a just little a, bit. Just a little bit. Eh, put a, <laughs> that's okay, I don't wanna go overboard, okay? No, that's not overboard. That's, that's, to me, that's perfect. You like that? I like that. Yeah, you whip this while I seasoned this thing. I seasoned this little guy over here. Look at this. And then we put a little salt. We're gonna put a little pepper in there. Now this is one of those times where you use heavy cream, you use butter. If somebody at home wanted to, they could skimp a little bit, you know, use a little of that light stuff. Oh, why, why not? Come right. on, you go for the gusto here. I agree. Now smell this. What is this, your cologne? <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing there? Well, it is a small oh, kitchen. Oh, boy, look at this. So look, after we whisk in that little butter, we're getting a shot there, then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna, we're gonna pass it. We wanna get rid of all those little shallots out of there. We got the flavor out of there already, okay? And then we're just gonna top it a little bit. Look at that, okay? And then we got a wonderful little sauce. And then when, uh, in a few minutes, we're gonna show you what we're gonna do now, with it. Now, as we're gonna finish, the, start those other dishes, how do you keep this? Keep it warm. Keep Don't it let warm. it get cold. Put it back on the, on the corner of the stove and just keep it okay. warm. And if you screw it up, a little bit of water, drizzle a little water into it, bring it right back to You life. got it, baby. Okay, great. At that point, let's take a short break. We come back, we're going to take this beurre blanc sauce and create two dishes, don't go in. This, this is like a crossover between Italian and French. I like that idea. You like that one? Sounds good. So here, we're going to just lightly poach those oysters, all right, in their liquor, like that, OK? And we're going right. to stick these shells up there to get warm. So and meanwhile, meanwhile the shells good. Yeah, all right. Wait. Pass me the tagliatelle. You, so, you know, so we waste that. nothing. That's the Italian in here. You got that? All right, so what we're going to do is I got a little pot here with some water, okay, and some butter, and a little salt, and I'm just going to throw the tagliatelle right in there, just like that okay. for a minute, okay? Now, what we're going to do is just we want to lightly poach those oysters, okay? Right. Let the cameraman, come here, cameraman, take a look at that over there. Just lightly poach them, okay? All right, we don't want to cook them to death. We want to leave a little then bit of life in rubber. them. Yeah, right. yeah, you got it. So here, what we're going to do is Come over here, all right? We heat up our shells. Right. And here, I got this little plate, all right? Oh, I put some I sea salt oh, so yeah. we don't have them rolling and rocking and rolling all over the place. Beautiful presentation. You like that? It's a trill, ain't it? Oh, <laughs> I amaze myself sometimes. <laughs> all right, so come over here. Wait, 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 wait. Let's come back over here. And here, we got our pasta. So it's fresh pasta. We don't want to cook that one to death either. Right. All right, so I got a fork. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour some of that excess juice off there, all right? Now remember, I put some butter in there. I so can smell the butter. You now. got that? All right, so now let's bring that over here. And then what we wanna do is put a little bed of this pasta. See that? Oh boy, I see what you're doing. This okay. looks great, We're yeah. We're gonna put a little pasta right on the bottom like that, that little guy there, look at that. And these oysters, I'm gonna tell you, I'm not crazy, I don't know about West Coast oysters to cook with. 
I find them a little milky. So these ones, these are Malapec oysters. Okay. From the good old East Coast of the USA. There's a lot of good fish on the East Coast. I don't think people realize that. Actually, yeah. New York too has a lot of good fish. Probably. Me, you have to see in Coney Island what we catch out of the water. They're That's not always, what I'm afraid they're of. They're not always fish, but right. uh, we try to utilize them one way or another. <laughs> All right, so here, let's find cheer our up little a little bit. You should have some fun when you cook, Dave. Oh, absolutely. It just could be dangerous if you eat it. <laughs> All right, here, look at that. These oysters, you want lightly it there, poached. just very lightly poached like that, okay? And then, this is fun, this dish. Nice little uh, dish, you know, if you want to have a little, uh, this is a nice appetizer. What would you drink with this? Would you pair this with something? Because I know you do tasting menus here at the restaurant. Yeah, we would, nice white, champagne is perfect right. with this, okay? Or an, an, like a, a dry white wine. Okay. Here, what I got is some cucumber, okay? This is just a little julienne cucumber, and what I did was, Oh, come back here, cucumber. He's trying to run away over there. This little cucumber, I just slightly sauteed in butter, okay? Right. And the theme today is butter. butter. It's a little butter show. You like that? I love that. I think that... And I swear to you, I swear, there's only about 30 calories in this dish. And you know what the best part is, though? That's a good point. Who cares how many calories? You're not going to eat like this every night. Oh, but please. People eat, make eat. me sick about right. these diets and everything like that. You're going to eat. Enjoy yourself. Okay, look. Now, this is where we go back to that We can find that little beurre blanc like that. Look, and we put a little bit of beurre blanc right Man, over the I top like you, that. This looks killer. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. We're there's not more. done yet. We're there's not more. done yet. This is uh, a rock'em sock'em one over here. Here we got a little caviar, okay? And then oh. what we want to do is just, listen, if we're going to do it, let's go all the way, baby. Hey, you're talking. Look right. at this. Look at this. Oh, boy. Look at that. The, now, I tell you what, I've never seen anything like this. We used to eat this on Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn. With the caviar, too. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and there, that's a dish number one. And what okay? do you call this one? Uh, oysters with caviar. All yeah. right, you fair like that? enough. All I'll right. tell you what. We're going to take a short break. Okay. I'm going to find a fork. You've got to pay for the show, don't That's you? That's okay. When All we right. come back, we're going we're gonna to sell some advertising. <laughs> right. When we come back, we're going to go on to dish number two. Don't tell them. Let's keep them in suspense. Shh. Don't go anywhere. Stick around and stay hungry. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome back. We're in the kitchen with Chef Ruggiero. Nice. Nice. Irish name, man. See the way it rolls off the tongue, too? <laughs> Just like Carmine. Now, we're not making corned beef and cabbage today. What are we making? We're going to make a little scallops, OK? okay? I want to get serious here. All right. Everybody outside thinks we're not serious here. So look at this. A little aluminum foil, a little butter. This is a neat little trick. I got this little uh, ring here. If you ain't got it at home, you can get a, a, a can. You can right. cut a can like this. But don't use the cat food, because it's not that appealing. <laughs> so here what we do is we just kind of mark that there. You see that? That right. little circle there? Oh, can the camera see it? Oh, come nice close. Look, now I'm making everybody sick at home, OK? These are dry sea scallops, OK? Fresh, dry sea scallop. All right. You don't want to get the wet ones, because they're not going to work for this. And then what we do is we're going to slice these little scallops just like that. You nice see that? Nice and thin, OK. Oh, look at that. These. This is gonna make a beautiful little flower like this when you slice them like this. And you know the other good thing about slicing scallops like this? What's that? You could be a cheapskate because it only takes like two scallops to feed, <laughs> feed somebody, okay? So then look, with the magic of television, look at this. I made right. one before, okay? Look at that. Can we so see that? So you overlap them right around like you would a like, little a, flower. like a, a pie, like an apple a pie. Flower. Like a, a flower. It's a flower, okay? okay this is my segment, all right? <laughs> a little salt and pepper. Look at this. Oh, how cute. This is really exciting, isn't it? Look at so that. So far, so good. You, you got like me. That? All right, so now. Now, why the aluminum foil? Because you're going to cook it with it. And, and you, you want it to all stay together. Yeah, you need to put it on something, OK? So look at this. Now, turn with me. Let me take the butter, OK? Here <laughs> you we go. You can't leave without the butter. Walk Dave. with Don't me. Don't leave without the butter. Walk with me here. We got a little pan here, OK? All right. And then what we're going to do is we want to put just a little butter. No kidding. More this butter? Time, this time I'm being serious. All right. Just a little butter, OK? All right? And you want this to heat up for a second, all right? And then, make sure it's nice and hot like that. See the butter there? This right. is a technical term. It's going to foam. It's okay? a technical term. And okay. then, I'm with you. Take this like this, put it in the left hand, the right hand, the left, the right, and then throw it right in like this, okay? Let that cook for one second, okay? All right. While that little guy is cooking, follow me back over here, okay? I almost lost you in this kitchen. You got me? Okay, All here. Right. We got a little tomato, okay? This is cooked tomato. We're in the middle of the winter. It's snowing outside. You can't find fresh tomato? Use canned tomato, right. OK? I agree with that. Just stewed with a little bit of uh, olive oil, OK? Salt and pepper like that. And there's a nice texture to them. You left them, you left them yeah. pretty chunky like that. And here, I got a little bit of, uh, this is uh, sauteed spinach. And then what I do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to layer it with a little bit of spinach. OK. Just like that, OK? Spinach just has garlic. Oil, no salt, garlic pepper, in this no one. Garlic in no this garlic one. in this one. Just sauteed. A little bit of butter like that. 
Then I'm going to put a little bit of tomato like that, okay? Right. You like that? Oh, so this far, is... So far, you got me. I love tomato. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is, this is already hot. We're going to remove the, the can, the catfish can, right. or whatever you got over there. <laughs> and now, walk with me. We come back to this little sucker here that's cooking, okay? And then, what you want to do is, you don't want to cook it too much. Oh, Beautiful. look at that. Beautiful. With the magic of television. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. You just got to cook and just the right well, way. Of a minute, maybe a minute and a half tops, right? Yeah, yeah, about, more or less, okay? And then what you want to do is you come back to this guy, right? And you just want to kind of slide him, slide, slide. Oh, look at that. Oh, boy, right on top like that, okay? And then Beautiful. does he look cute, just like a little flower? <laughs> or if it's carmine, it's a little... What was it, a little pie? Yeah, right. It's a I mean, flour, like a galette, okay? Like an apple galette. Come you on, know? come I mean, on. It's, it's a flour. We bring back our little butter sauce here, and now we're going to put some chives, okay? Chopped chives. Yeah, this excited your cameraman. The caveat, <laughs> dance, the caveat didn't excite him. The ca <laughs> Got him dancing, no sense, I know. No sense here. And then what we want to do is, look at this. We're just going to spoon. That bird blanc you kept warm. Yes, that was a little warm there. And what you want to do is just spoon a little bit around like that, right? And we need a little color. Okay. So let's get a little bit more of that tomato, okay? We're gonna put a little tomato on top. Right. And then we put a little chevil, okay? Right. You like this? Beautiful. Fancy, Beautiful. fancy. If you're a cheapskate, you can use parsley, okay? <laughs> Italian parsley. Italian Keep parsley. Keep measuring Italian okay? influence again. And there, look at that. You put that little chevil now, over there. dare I ask? What? What's the name of this one now? Scallops. <laughs> Why are we gonna make this complicated, right? You like that? Yeah, but now you gotta do me a favor. Why? This is uh, dinner for us. Can we finish? Dinner? With... That's not dinner well, for us. Well, well that's like I'm just an getting you warmed up. But can, okay. we, can we try some sweet, some desserts? What do you say? I got a sweetheart to show you some sweets. Can I meet Sarah? Let's go. Let's go meet Sarah. Come on. Now, after a great meal, I believe, you know I believe, you have to have some dessert. Now, moderation, but why skip dessert? And now I've met one of my... My favorite people here at Rouge. <laughs> See, you don't know this about me, Sarah. This is Sarah, who's the pastry chef here. I really do love desserts. Yeah. Now, how long have you been making desserts? About five years. So what got you into that end? Because it's a whole different thing now than cooking mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. line in a restaurant. I was actually managing restaurants, but I always found myself in the kitchen in the, de in the pastry chef's way. Or picking at the desserts? Picking at the desserts, yeah. helping out when they were too busy. And then one day I just decided that that's what I wanted to do. And I moved to New York and started to do it. Well, I tell you, to me, it's probably one of the dream jobs in the kitchen. You know, mm -hmm. you make it look simple. You come in probably ahead of everybody else. You got to yeah. stay out of their way. You've got your own special tools. But I got to tell you now, you've done something here at the restaurant which kind of mirrors uh, Chef David's take on the, the food, where mm -hmm. he does tastings yeah. of the food. Now, tell me a little bit about some of the desserts that you make. Do you rotate them? How does it work? We do. I rotate them uh, fairly frequently, probably every other month. And it's always seasonally. But how about chocolates now? Do you do some chocolates? We do this one. Uh, this is a chocolate polenta cake. We also did a degustation of chocolate, which was the tasting. Right. And now we've actually switched that out for an apple tasting. So, but take a step back for a second. Now, you got chocolate there. You got my attention. <laughs> this one is chocolate polenta, polenta cake. cake, which is, it sounds crazy, but tell me, what made you think of this one? Well, I like a chocolate souffle cake, but it always was a little too delicate, and I wanted to try to do something a little bit with a more rustic mouthfeel. Right. So I added the polenta, and it gives it a really nice texture. And it's funny you should say that, because I talk about cooking all the time and how I cook for sweet and sour more so, but also mm -hmm. texture. I mm -hmm. really think about texture when I'm eating mm -hmm. or cooking food. And you've taken that and actually applied it to desserts, which I think is yeah. really cool. See, I'm not one of those creamy, like I don't like a cream puff. I'll eat the shell. And, and the chocolate. The yeah, because the cream to me is just, there's not much there in mouthfeel. Right. Now you talked about the apples. Tell me a little bit about this. Well, that is a cinnamon apple Napoleon, and that is a caramel apple tatin, and this is a Calvados cheesecake wrapped in a caramel box. So this is a tasting of apples. If right. So I you get three different, three different ways to eat an apple. This is phenomenal. And again, seasonal and change. And how about this? Now tell me a little bit about this. This is actually something that we just put on. It's a chef's tasting, and I can change it every day if I want. Well, you're um, going to have to come up with something. <laughs> that's going home with me, that's for sure. We have a chocolate-filled brioche and palmiers, coconut macaroons, and an orange rose water pound cake. Well, Sarah, I got to tell you, you make it look so easy. And I, yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same thing. I'm going to make eating it look so easy, yeah, right? Yeah, I'll join you. And, and then we're going to, come on, dig in. You got a fork there. Okay. We got a little sassignac here, a little bit of dessert wine. And, we'll, and then I got to go find Chef David. But All in right. the meantime, come on, let's dig okay. in before he catches us. 
-hmm. if, if I said to you, just give me one dish that represents this restaurant, would it be that one? What would it be? What would you think? That or the halibut. We did the new halibut with, right. the, with the pecans the and we do it with the, yeah. the corn and the fresh sorrel. And then we put in the sauce, so it's a puree of corn and garlic. The, the crew was raving over that. Yeah. They say they eat better here than they do at my place. I, I got competition Gee, now. A couple of dollars, look what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell everybody, they want to find out more about Rouge. Tell us the website. RougeNY.com. Or you can call me at 207-4601 and I'll abuse the living hell out of you. <laughs> And if the recipes, would you give them to me so I can give them to the folks? How much you got? <laughs> <laughs> of course, my friend. Carmine'sTable.com. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get the recipes, but there's nothing like the real thing. This, chef, I'm telling you, this was phenomenal. Give phenomenal. me a kiss. When are you, when are you okay, coming guys. back up? When are you coming back to, to Albany to work with us again? When they'll let me out of the city. They won't right, let good. me out for the next couple of weeks. You got a deal now. I know this guy's working hard. Hard working man here, and I heard all about it. Thanks, thanks, thanks thank so you, much. Your hospitality, your friendship. This you. is a blast. Folks, give it a shot. Give the address. 135 and 62nd. I yeah, got forgot. you for a moment there. <laughs> Work the trip. If you're in the city, don't go to those other joints. This is the place you want to Thank be. Thank you. I, I had a blast. That. Thanks my again. Friend. Folks, we'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching. I'm going to finish. There's something left on my plate. Well, well now we'll have to, to hang out? No, All right. No, yeah, a little Salute. clicky there. Thanks. We'll see you again next Salute. time.